Good morning, Elgin Missionary Church, and welcome to Church Online. We have a great service lined up today, and whether you're here with us for the first time online or you're here every single week, thanks for clicking on this video and tuning into our service. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you that we can uh, come together online. I just pray a blessing over uh, our service and our time together, and whether we're uh, you know, at work or we're watching this uh, in our homes, whenever, wherever we're watching this, Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to just come together and grow closer to each other, but ultimately closer to you. In Jesus' amazing name I pray, and I'm not ashamed. Amen. Enjoy the service.
So what I've noticed about this congregation is, is that there is a lot of people doing a lot of things in the name of Christ. It might not be, you know, within the auspices or in this building, but as Jerry has mentioned about the homeless, uh, there's those who struggle with addictions, and I know Celebrate Recovery is doing a great work, and uh, there's a feeling of compassion and a desire to help. So with the younger ones, we uh, maybe say about the Ten Commandments, don't lie and don't steal and uh, don't commit adultery and don't covet. But uh, Micah kind of summed it up for us adults, and that is, is to do justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly before God. This is pure religion. This is what we're all about. Do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly before our God. And so because we walk humbly, and because we know he's a gracious God, we know we can come and present our request to him. So let's do so right now. Let's unite our hearts together. Dear Lord, we thank you because you are the everlasting God. From the beginning to the end, Lord, you have been faithful and true. As you've looked back upon our Christian life, whether it's been a few months or whether it's been a few years or a few decades, Lord, we thank you because you have always been faithful and true. Lord, at times we have let you down, but even then, Lord, you are faithful and true. You delight in hearing the prayers of your people and you delight in granting our requests. And Lord, we understand that today, our world is a very broken world. And Lord, you've called us to do our part to uh, redeem, to uh, shine, to, 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 to make a difference in our world, to, to be Christ, to, to be Christ's hand extended. And Lord, we understand Elgin has that burden and desire. And so, Lord, we would just pray that we will do justly in these days. We'll do right. We will Lord, love mercy and uh, that we'll extend mercy and kindness to those around us. And Lord, we pray that we also will just understand, Lord, we cannot do anything in our own strength. It's by the power of the Spirit, by the power of God that any of these things happen. And so, Lord, we pray and we come before you with many physical needs. We know Dave Fangra is in the hospital. We understand that Ellen's got issues at home. We understand, Lord, that uh, Jerry uh, is, is facing a very serious uh, uh, scenario right now. And we just know, Lord, that uh, you are so loving and kind. And though this world is broken and there's trouble everywhere, you've come to intervene and you've come to be there. And your presence uh, uh, makes a difference. And so, Lord, we pray you'll be very, very close to these situations. For these other physical requests, Lord, whether it uh, be a, a, a foster grandson, whether it be uh, someone with a brain tumor, whether it uh, be uh, other requests, Lord, you are more than enough. You're the God who delights in blessing your people. And so, Lord, we come and humbly come before you and say, Lord, do great things. Do above we can, what we can ask or think. Bring healing and grace, Lord. Just do your work in these very dire situations, some of them. And Lord, we pray for those who are grieving. And Lord, we just know that uh, the Freeman family has had a terrible, terrible loss. And uh, uh, it, Terry Lynn was so much to uh, so many in that family. And so, Lord, we would pray that somehow you'll bring comfort and grace to their hearts. That, Lord, they'll uh, uh, look to you, Lord, for help in this very present time of trouble. And, Lord, we pray that uh, they'll sense uh, your closeness and your nearness as, as they uh, grieve this terrible loss. We ask these things knowing, Lord, that you're such a great God and all-powerful, all-loving. And Lord, we look to you for wonderful things because that's the way you work. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen.
The scripture reading this morning is taken from Philippians chapter 1, verses 27 through 30. Philippians 1, 27 to 30. I'll be reading from the NIV. This section is entitled, Life Worthy of the Gospel. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who would oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him, since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Thanks be to God for his word. As you know, this is the uh, second of my series of Joyride, and it probably is hard to talk about joy when we've had uh, many losses. But this is the uh, chagrin of the Christian life. We do rejoice with those who rejoice, and we also mourn with those who mourn. And this study is probably very timely as you look at the book of Philippians. I want to thank those who brought the kayak and those who brought the canoe. And uh, there was some talk of a tractor showing up. A few weeks ago, we had a spider and a motorcycle and an ATV. It's just a, a prop to say the Christian life in a sense, is a joy ride. And we, again, get this hard to get our mind around because we think religion is a serious business, so therefore we will not smile, according to Hezekiah chapter 2 and verse 4. Nope, no such thing. There is a joy ride, and we're going to talk about that joy ride some today and over the next few weeks weeks. Joy does not mean that you won't have troubles. In this very passage, we've talked about this, Paul acknowledges he's got struggles. By the same token, he has joy. The book of Philippians is unique and uh, unusual in that Paul, as we've mentioned before, was chained to a Roman guard. For, uh, I don't know, 24-7. If he wasn't chained 24-7 to a guard, he was chained to the floor or something. He was not a free man. He was under house arrest. At the same token, uh, his charges were like sedition and treason. So because of that, he was uh, facing a death sentence. And yet, as he writes this book to the Philippians, he's not saying, boy, you know, I have it really tough. He's not even saying, you know, pray for me because, you know, I'm in prison and uh, the, the rats around here and the stuff around here is the food is terrible. You don't hear any of that stuff. He talks about the joy he has. And 15 times he talks about rejoicing joy because he senses that joy. And because he's facing a a death sentence, he kind of talks about death. And that's a topic that we consider taboo. We don't want to talk about death because, well, that's that's, that's, that's a terrible topic. And we all know we should be making better preparations, but, you know, we don't like to talk about the fact that one day we will face death. But we don't know. We don't have one day necessarily. We don't have the next moment, the next breath. Everything's a really a gift, and that's why they call it the present to each one of us. We have this present. And Paul 
has experienced lots of trials and troubles. I read last time about all his shipwrecks and beatings and being left for dead, and yet he still talks about joy, and he says, for me to live, it's all about Jesus, (laughs) And, and that's my joy. For me to live is great, to die is gain. I'll I'll be so much better off when I get to go see the one I've served for so long. It'll be such a wonderful joy. And so Paul's epistle is not about sadness and self-pity, but it's about happiness because he says that all these bad things have actually helped to spread the gospel. So he is chained to a guard. And at one place it says it's the Praetorian guard or the imperial guard. So the rich guy's kids, the young men, the cream of the creme, <laughs> the, the creme brulee, they all like to be part of the imperial guard. And of course, Paul is chained to them. Talk about a captive audience. <laughs> and the Bible says, or Paul says that he's been able to influence those of Caesar's household because he's had this opportunity. Talk about not feeling sorry for himself. (laughs) He can look death in the face and yet he sees new life and he is not afraid. What a guy. And he tells us in this passage, if you want joy, then you need to become a joy rebel. (laughs) And you say, what? I didn't read that there. You need to understand that Philippi was a Roman colony. So all these soldiers that served in the different armies of the, the Roman legions, at one time they would retire. You may be be aware of veterans lots even in Canada, right? Uh, they had a certain land after the, uh, the war, and if you had served your country, you, you could get a, an acre of land, and you could uh, build your house on it, because it was a reward for being a soldier. Well, the Romans did the same thing back in the day, and around Philippi, there was a, a whole bunch of retired soldiers. And so Paul, when he writes about the citizens of heaven, he's kind of reminding these guys that they're not just serving Rome. They've got a higher calling. They've got another calling. And in a sense, you become subversive. You you don't necessarily go along or live according just to the government. You're saying you're really treading on dangerous ground here. I think the government gives us a standard like this, and God gives us a standard like this. If you get over God's standard, you can make it over man's standard. But in a sense, we serve someone else. A lot of Christians during the time of Paul, endured the stake because they couldn't say uh, Caesar is Lord. That was the way of saying you're a good Canadian. You know, Caesar's Lord. (laughs) They couldn't say that because Jesus was Lord. They served someone else. They respected Caesar for who he was, but they had a higher calling. So if you want joy, in a sense, you've got to be subversive. Hmm. First of all, Paul says, if you want joy, your conduct must be commendable. I don't know about... uh, the common criminal these days. I I don't seem to have a lot in my life. But the Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. The more you transgress, the more you go against the law, the harder things are. There's things that society does to uh, help you to conform. 
Paul says, your conduct. Live according to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're going to live different. You're going to behave not as a citizen of the earth. You're going to behave as a citizen of heaven. (laughs) Paul says in another place, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because what's happening, society is trying to put you into its mold to conform, to go along. Paul says, live above that. We have in our society a great pressure for personal peace and affluence. You know, we want to have our space. We want to enjoy our space. We want to not have troubles and trials and difficulties and sorrows and suffering. We want to have uh, a few things to enjoy. We at least want to have what our neighbor has. He's got one. I'd like to have one too. Do not conform to this world. We live by a different standard. It's not all about our pleasure, according to Paul. It's not all about having money per se, that won't bring happiness necessarily or joy. It won't bring prestige, or it's not that we want prestige. For Paul to have joy, it was all about Christ, to lift him up. And so our conduct needs to be commendable, above reproach. It needs to also be consistent. We don't just be good in front of people. We don't just be good when it suits us. Christ wants us to live a holy life, a pure life, even in the dark when nobody notices. Paul also says, you bondservants, obey your masters in the Lord (laughs) according to the flesh, not with eye service, not just to please them as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, pleasing God. But also I notice from this passage in First Philippians chapter 1, verses 27 to 30, is that first of all, he tells us that our conduct is important and that will bring joy. So we go against the world that says, you know, a little lie is okay, a little stealing is okay if you can get away with it. You know, the, no. He wants us to live a holy life. The other thing is that brings joy, Paul says, is to live in community to enjoy one another. Again, our society says, you know, you have a right (laughs) and you don't need to worry about anybody else. That you can be some sort of lone ranger and you can kind of be a, a Christian all by yourself. It doesn't really matter about a group or a community. You're just gonna, it's just you and God. (laughs) Paul says, be in community. That's where the joy is. It's not about your individual rights. It's not about to say your problem is not my problem. We don't say, I don't care what you think. I'm going to do what I want to do. <laughs> I don't care what you say. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Together, submitting ourselves one to the other, Paul says, is the way to joy. <laughs> So we rebel against that society that keeps saying, you're number one, just your thoughts, your peace, your, your joy, that's all you got to worry about, your happiness. No, we're in this together. We're uniting together. We are supportive of one another. That's where the joy is. The next thing Paul says is to have courage. He says, there is going to be troubles. There are going to be struggles. (laughs) Take courage. There will be opposition. Jesus himself said, in the world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So we need to have courage. And so we rebel against the sense of, I want to avoid 
difficulties. I want to avoid troubles. Because this is what Jesus himself did. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy before him endured the cross, despising or disregarding the shame, and is now sitting in a place of honor beside the throne of God. For the joy, he went through the suffering. We want to just have personal peace at all cost. Jesus himself said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Talk about being a rebel, it's going against the status quo. Winston Churchill was the Prime Minister of England during the war. And just after Dunkirk, Winston Churchill was able to encourage the people of England who at this point were kind of the last holdouts. And Winston Churchill said these words, the Battle of France is over, and I expect the Battle of Britain is about to begin. Upon this battle depends the survival of Christian civilization. All the might and fury of the enemy will soon be turned on us. Hitler knows he will have to break us on this island, or he will lose the war. Let us brace ourselves to our duties. And if the British Empire and its commonwealth lasts a thousand years, may men say this was their finest hour. Joy rebels. We don't go along with society. Somehow we are different. How do they know that we are different? It's only in our conduct. It's as we scuff ourselves up, maybe have a little persecution at times. When we're going through tough times, that's when the good shows up. That shows when we are citizens of heaven. So today, the question is, is, How is your conduct? Are you walking worthy of the great gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for us? How is your cooperation? Are you part of the team? Are you striving as an athlete with others to to gain the prize? How is your, your, your unity with others? If you have odd against your brother, maybe it's time to say, let's let's get it right. Let's get it behind us. And how is your courage? Sometimes you don't feel that bold. Sometimes you don't feel that uh, uh, powerful. But this is again when we walk humbly before our God. Because when we start to feel weak and ask God for strength, we believe the Spirit of God is there to help us. If we try to do it in our own, yes, we will come to the end of ourselves but will never come to the end of his power to live in our lives. Today, how is your rebellion in a sense? Are you living different? How is the joy quotient? Is your conduct being proper? Is your cooperation in the right place? And are you courageous knowing that if God, if God, If God before us, who, like who, who can defy the most high God? If God before us, who can be against us? Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for Paul. And uh, in some ways we say, there's just no way I can be like him. (laughs) Lord, I feel burdened down by everything. 
And yes, troublesome times come, but I believe he'll give us a deep sense of peace and a deep sense that we can do it depending upon him. Lord, across this audience right now, we would just pray that your spirit will come down and speak to each and every heart. These are your precious people called by your name, called by name. You know us. You know exactly what we're going through. And right now we pray that your spirit will permeate each and every heart. That where there's discouragement, you will, you, you will bring strength and a sense of purpose and a sense of, yes, Lord, with you I can face this situation. Lord, we pray that uh, the joy of the Lord will be our strength in spite of very difficult circumstances that, Lord, will be sustained by your word, by your spirit, and that will sense your grace and your help. We just thank you, Lord, for all that you are and all that you mean to us. And we dedicate ourselves afresh to serving you, to doing your way, to be a real Christ follower who is known because, yes, our conduct is worthy of you and our, uh, we're working uh, in the body of Christ, doing our part and showing our gifts. And that, Lord, will be courageous even when things look bleak. We thank you, Lord, because you're the one who will do all this for us. We can't do it on our own. And we acknowledge our utter dependence upon you. So have your way in us, Lord. We want to be your faithful servants. We want to serve you honorably in the days ahead. And Lord, we thank you for this church and all these people. May we continue, Lord, to grow together, to love together, to minister together as a team to our community of Stratford. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.
treasures of the earth. There's no way to measure what you're worth. Crucified, laid behind the stone. Above all